Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, let me go get my list. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Willie Sneed, Des Bryant, Hollywood Brown, Lamar Jackson, Steve Smith Sr., Kurt Warner, 88% of 49ers fans, 72% of Ravens fans, and those are accurate numbers, by the way. And now RG3 joins that list of people that have called out Greg Roman's offense. And it's funny because somebody can be very clear. They can be crystal clear on what they're saying. And they can say exactly word for word, bar for bar, exactly what they mean. But some people, they will try to hear what they want to hear. They will take from it what they want to the way that they want to take from it, despite what the person said. And what I'm talking about is Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown in his interview, I am athlete. He said, I want it out. The offense wasn't for me. Love Lamar Jackson. He's going to get them there. He's the best player on that team. But the offense, it just, the offense wasn't a good fit for me. That's what he said. That's what he said. He didn't say that there was a lack of targets, because that's another thing that a lot of people say, oh, he got like 146 targets. No, no, no. He said the way that he was used in that offense was what he didn't like. So what I took from that was that it was the offense that Hollywood Brown didn't like. <laughs> but a lot of people, they took the interview and they said, oh, Lamar Jackson. Hollywood doesn't want to play with Lamar Jackson. See? Nobody wants to play with Lamar Jackson. Hollywood, his best friend, doesn't even want to play with him. But Hollywood said. Anyway, RG3, who has been uh, very interested in this topic. I mean, he played with these guys for a couple of years. Um, he was there uh, for Lamar Jackson's MVP season. Uh, Robert Griffin III served as, served as sort of a mentor uh, for Lamar Jackson. Now, I guess he not Ryan Tannehill style, right? But anyway, um, let's look at what RG3 had to say about this whole little situation. Let's listen. So he said Marquise Brown wanted out of Baltimore because of Greg Roman, not Lamar Jackson. So Robert Griffin III out here putting his career in the NFL on the line because you know he wants to get back but he was willing to speak out but anyway Marquise Brown wanted out because out of Baltimore because of Greg Roman not Lamar Jackson so that's how he started off and that's true I, I thought that wasn't obvious but it's not really an obvious to a lot of people and that's fine we don't mind explaining it but let's let's break it down because it gets better as you go along so, he said, Marquise knows Giro's system. Marquise knows Giro's system runs through backs and tight ends. So, it's unlikely a wide receiver one will get big money. Oh, gosh. I said this as well. With Hollywood, the timing. He is going into his fourth year. He knows what this offense is. He knows what this offense isn't. He's going into his fourth year. And at, even after his third year, as, as a first round draft pick, especially after your third year is so crucial because that's when your team has to decide whether they want to pick up that fifth year option or not. That's when your team starts deciding whether they want to pay you the big money, pay you that second contract or not. But for first round draft picks, they have a, a, just a little bit of an extra window. Because of the fifth year option. So with Hollywood, if he's in a system, if he's in an offense where he feels like it's not maximizing his talents. Yes, we know about the drops. I know that's the first thing people say. Oh, look at all those drops. Yes, he certainly had a significant number. And I don't even think it was more so a significant number of drops. But I think what really hurt a lot of Ravens fans was when the drops happen. Because a drop is always going to be bad. But... It's the timing of the drops that makes people like, oh, the drops. And I can understand that part. 
But if you're in an offense that's not going to maximize your skill set, then you're not going to be able to maximize your paycheck either. So I know Hollywood did say it's not, it wasn't about the money, but a lot of it has to do with the money in the long term, not the short term. Because in the long term, if he can go out there to Arizona and be the best Hollywood he can be, the paycheck's going to be higher. The money's going to go up. Had he stayed with the Ravens, then it, it probably would, it wouldn't be as high as it possibly can with Arizona. And we still got to see what happens there. And he's going to get to be put on full display from jump for the first six weeks since DeAndre Hopkins is out. But anyway, back to RG3. So he said, Giro's system runs through the backs and tight ends. As we know, that's what, I mean, the way that the Ravens been loading this thing up, they like, all right, Giro, hey, we giving it all to you. We giving you everything that you want. But anyway, uh, so it's unlikely wide receiver one will get big money. The best way to get paid was to be in a pass first offense in Arizona. Self-explanatory. Self-explanatory. RG3 made it crystal clear. And I think every Ravens fan knows that as well. Ravens offense is the receivers, they, they come last. It's about offensive. In Ravens' view, to have a successful offense, offensive line, and that is extremely important, tight ends, running backs. That's that. Of course, the quarterback too, but offensive line, tight ends, running backs. The, the, the Ravens don't value receiver like everybody else values receiver. But anyway, let's keep going. Next part, he said, throwing the ball more is not the proven recipe for success for the Ravens. Now, how do you define success? Anyway, throwing the ball more is not the proven recipe for success for the Ravens. In the last three years, the Ravens have only thrown the ball more uh, than running it one time. So in the last three years, so that's 2019 through 2020, 2021. So all the years where Lamar Jackson has been a starting quarterback, they've only thrown more than running one year. And that was last year. And a lot of people feel like that was only due to all the injuries that they sustained. Because you lost your running backs, you lost significant pieces on your offensive line, you lost different receivers at different times, you even end up losing your quarterback. But before you lost your quarterback, you were throwing the ball a whole lot more because you couldn't run. You couldn't run. You didn't have the pieces in place to run, so you were forced to throw. Anyway, continuing. He said that was last year, and it was the only year the Ravens had a losing record. So I guess that clears up what RG3 and the, the word success, what, how he defines success for the Ravens, and that's not having a losing record. And, and again, they did make the playoffs those other two years, but they were a lot healthier those other two years. And I mean, any other year, pretty much healthier. But anyway, he said Lamar being, Lamar being out didn't help either. Well, that's true. Here we go. This, this is where it gets really good for me. He said despite, oh, never mind, this is the next part. But he said despite throwing the ball more last year, the Ravens still averaged 90 more runs than passes over the last three years. So he put the average of how many uh, runs they did and how many passes they did over the last three years. And the average, despite last year that they threw the ball more, the average is still 90 more runs than passes when you put all together the numbers for the past three years, which I don't think anybody would be surprised from that at all. Uh, he said the Cardinals... Average 116 more passes than runs the last three years. So that just goes to show that Cardinals offense is very pass happy. Ravens offense is very run happy. But this, these are things that you all already know. So it's no surprise anything to anybody watching this. So keep it going. He said, for reference, the Chiefs haven't run the ball more than they have thrown it in 10 years. So they, they got their philosophy over there. Hey, we a passing team. We're going to run the ball every now, but we are passing team, the Chiefs. All right. This was my favorite part because when Hollywood talked about why he wanted to be traded, again, he said it was the system. Then so many, I've I seen it so many times throughout this past week. Hollywood had like 140 some targets. He was top, what, three or top five, top 10 in targets as a receiver. What are he talking about? He ain't getting no targets. What? What's he talking about? 
he did not say it was due to lack of targets. He said it's the system and he said it's the way that he was used. He didn't say he wasn't used. He said it's the way that he was used. But let's read this next part. RG3 said Marquise Brown had 146 targets last year. And this is my favorite part, but they weren't all catchable targets. Oh, context. Context is a beautiful thing because, again, so many people. He had 146 targets last year. He had so many targets last year. Why, how come he complained that he had all them targets last year? Quality over quantity. He did have a lot of targets last year. He, he certainly did. But just because it's a target doesn't mean it's a good one. Doesn't mean it's an accurate one. Doesn't mean it's a target that's on the money. Lamar missed him sometimes. Huntley missed him sometimes. Uh, Josh Johnson missed him sometimes. It happened. A lot of people take these 146 targets and they're like, hey, every one of those 146 targets were good. Hollywood, are you in those drops, Holly? Well, you know what? I'm not even calling you Holly. I'm calling you Marquise. Anyway. So, Marquise Brown had 146 targets last year, but they weren't all catchable targets. With Lamar being out down the stretch, Hollywood's longest reception. I didn't even know this. That's, that's very nasty. His longest reception was 15 yards in the last five games. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. I didn't know it was that rough. I knew when Lamar went out, obviously Hollywood's numbers, they took a huge dip. Huge drop. But I didn't know it was that ugly. Ooh. I, I probably would have wanted out too. That's what I said. I'm out. Bye. But, <laughs> but anyway, man. Um, and we know, again, Hollywood, he did have some drops. In those last games, especially the uh, the Steelers game, there were two. There were two big. And again, I don't even think for for Ravens fans, I don't even think it was the drops that hurt them. Because Mark Andrews, he has drops as well. Other players have drops, but I think it's the timing of the drops that hurt Ravens fans the most. Because uh, and again, I know that Steelers game is stuck in so many Ravens fans' mind. Like they go back to the fourth quarter of that game with uh, Tyler Huntley, I think. He threw a, a ball down the field to Hollywood. Hollywood was right next to the sideline, and all he did, had to do was catch it. You put Justin Tucker in range. We ain't got to worry about no overtime with these Steelers. We about to kick a game-winning field goal. But Hollywood dropped it on the sideline, and it was like, Ooh. I think a Steelers defender kind of punched it out too. But Then you go back to that same game, and you're like, oh, man, Tyler Huntley put it on the money for Hollywood in the end zone, and whoa, he dropped it. But again, it's the timing and the, the, the effect. And I think, the, and not even I think I know. Because in the blowout games, Hollywood had a drop. Like in the Chargers game. Somebody just reminded me in the Chargers game, Hollywood had a, a couple of drops. And I was like, I didn't even remember. I didn't even remember them. But the drops that I remember from Hollywood specifically came in the Detroit game. Yeah. And in the Steelers game. I know there were others too, but those are the ones that come, always come to my mind first. Detroit game and the Steelers game. What were both of those games as opposed to the Chargers games? They were close. They were tight. So you tend to remember a lot of the big plays, a lot of the big plays that the Ravens made, a lot of big plays that the Ravens didn't make in those games because those games were so close. Those games were so stressful. Those games were just so crazy. So anyway, continuing. He said... Uh, Lamar being out down the stretch, Hollywood's longest reception was 15 yards in the last five games. Arizona gives him an opportunity to be a star in a system he knows from college. And that was the end of RG3's thread. So, yes, um, this is a big opportunity for Hollywood. Uh, I feel like there is um, there's some pressure on Hollywood, for sure. Because, and you know, you know a, lot of, a lot of Ravens fans are going to be watching closely, watching every single Hollywood play. Some are, are going to be watching in a good way. Like, oh, yeah, we're rooting for you, Hollywood. A lot are going to be watching in a bad way. Like, I don't like your Hollywood. But whatever you choose to do, that's up to you. But with Hollywood Brown, um, there's a lot of pressure on him for wanting out. It's a lot of pressure on him to perform. Because he wanted out. He got out. Now it's like, okay, what are you going to do with your newfound freedom? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, so anyway, that was that. I appreciate it, RG3, for this thread. Uh, it was fun to go over. Uh, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you all for making this fun. Thank you all for listening. Like Hollywood is now when it comes to being with the Ravens, we out.